Choosing a wood filler for woodworking can be confusing, and I've produced a previous video on these various products and the pros and cons of each. In this video, I'm gonna go in depth in one of the products, and that's a burn-in stick. These are sticks that you heat up and you put in the void and smooth them out. This is something you apply after a finish. So whether you're working on repairing a hardwood floor, a piece of furniture, or even working on a new piece like this. I have a little bit of tear out in this walnut and I need to fix that. This is a product that I use because I can color match really well and it gives me a good result. I'm gonna show you how it's all done. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it, and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. Brought to you in partnership with Mohawk Finishing Products. I'll start by showing you a demonstration on a new piece of woodworking. Here I've got some tear out on a walnut box I'm making. And there were also a couple spots where I was working with the splines and didn't quite seat them well enough. So I've got some small gaps. The key difference between burn-in wood fillers and other wood fillers is burn-in wood fillers go on after the finish. It's really important because you're not guessing what the color is going to be. You can see as I'm applying shellac here, it's changing the color of the wood. So if you're putting a traditional wood filler in, you're guessing at what the wood's going to look like once it's finished. By adding a burn-in wood filler, you're dealing with a finished piece so you know exactly what the color is and you can dial that in to match. On this walnut box, there's a dramatic difference before the finish and after the finish. So now we can tell what color we need. I'm using a true brown burn-in stick for this fill. The process is to use a soldering iron to melt the burn-in stick, and your goal is to overfill the void. Then you need time for the fill to cool. That's about 20 seconds on a really small fill. It's going to take more time on something larger. But what you do is scrape it down and level it off. This is so you have a seamless transition between the fill and the surrounding area. Now on the corner of the boxes where I've installed these splines, you can see the color is much darker. Here's the void I need to fill, and I've chosen an extra dark walnut. Now the advantage of using a burn-in stick over a crayon filler is that it's a harder product. This is something that is easy to level off and make sure you don't end up with a depression when you've got that filled. It also offers more durability because it is a harder product than a crayon. This is something that requires heat to activate it. So you end up scraping it off in layers. And let me show that to you up close so you can understand that. Here's a small void I'm filling in. And I'll speed up the camera to let the filler harden. As I work this down, you'll see curls develop. You can see and hear how hard the burn-in stick is. So it gives you an idea of how much more durable and more true this is when you're working on a flat surface using a scraper. After leveling it off, you've got a bit of a sheen. So you can dull that down with your finger if you want to match the existing finish, or if you've got a higher gloss finish, you can buff it up. I'll tell you more about top coats afterwards. Here's an example of putting on a wax top coat. You can see how well it blends in. This is Mohawk's Quick Fill product. I use it a lot in furniture repairs. Mohawk sent me some hard fill, which I've never used before. I'm gonna use it on a hardwood floor a little bit later in this video. The next example I've got for you is working on furniture repair. Burn and sticks are great because you can match the color of the existing finish. This is a rocker that broke and I've got a spot here and here that have small voids I need to fill in. The side of this rocking chair had split and I've glued it back together again. If you want to see the full video on this rocking chair repair, I'll leave a link in the video description. This is the spot I want to fill in here, so I'll put the chair this way. So I've got a level working surface and then I'll get up my kit. I keep everything in the kit because this allows me to do service calls and it's just really three main components. A soldering iron, something to clean off the uh, burn-in sticks with, and then the burn-in sticks themselves. I use an assortment pack that has a number of different colors, that way I can get one that's relatively close and then make it lighter or darker according to what I need. I've chosen two sticks here. I'm going to go with the darker one first and see how that works. This one is a dark brown mahogany, and this one here is a cherry. So I might need to lighten it with that, but the only way to really tell is to try it out. I love how fast the soldering iron works. It's much better than the corded one that I was using previously. 
I'll do the same thing over here. Just melt some wax in, overfill it a little bit, and then let it harden. The next step is to take out a plastic card scraper. And I've got one here I use as a wedge shape, but you can use a credit card as well. And what you need to do is just gently pull it across the filled area to start with. Now I can already tell that this is a little bit too red, but I'm going to scrape it down anyway because what I'm going to be doing is adding more to it. So the reason that you scrape it this way first to pull it is so you don't end up chipping pieces out when you're working on it. But once you get those major chunks off the top, then you can scrape it frontwards. So do the same thing over here. Run it backwards first. The nice thing about this is I've got a flexible tip at the front, very rigid at the back, so I can adjust the pressure that I'm putting on the piece. And wood has a lot of color variation to it. So what's going to work here will not necessarily work back here. Okay, so here you can probably see this is more red. So what I'm going to do is grab a dark tone. Here I've got something called True Brown. So this soldering iron heats up in about five seconds and it just runs off of two AA batteries. It's uh, really impressive compared to a traditional um, soldering iron. So what I'm doing is just mixing the colors together here. A bit of that True Brown. And let that harden up. And this one, I need a little bit, not as much, I don't think. So just mix that in there. Get rid of some of that red. And the nice thing about using multiple colors is wood isn't naturally just one color. So if you've got a couple different colors you're working on, then it sort of helps blend in with the repair that you're working on as well. Okay, let that harden up and we'll take a look and see what it looks like. Really a small area like this, you just need about 20 seconds or so before you can start working it. A larger spot like that, and just leave it for a little bit longer. So here you can see we're much closer to what the color should be. Now there's lighter wood down here, darker wood up top. So I'm just going to add a little bit more dark on the top, darken that up. So this one here is black. I'm just going to get a little bit of the black, mix it in up here, quickly pull it off. Okay, that was a little bit overdoing it. So nice thing about this, make a mistake, you can adjust it. So that black was way too dark. So I'm just putting a bit of this true brown back in, mix in with that black. Let's see what that looks like. I'm actually going to manipulate this while it's still, still slightly warm. You can see I haven't quite got that black out of there. So let me just add a little bit more and we'll tone that in. There, it's looking good. There's just a fringe of something on the very edge there. I'll add a little bit more. Just right there. Okay, it's looking good. So then over here, let's scrape this and see what this looks like. Okay, 
Okay, we're getting there. So I like the tone that we're getting right in here, but on the edges there, I didn't quite work in enough of the true brown. I'm just gonna take the slightest touch of black here. So I've just put a tiny bit on the tip. And I'm gonna grab a whole bunch of that brown. Work it in with that mahogany color. So as you can tell, this is not a science. This is definitely an art. So you just have to be patient with it. And with experience, you'll get better at it. But the nice thing about working on a filler like this is you're not trying to play with the finish where you're trying to predict where the color is going to be when the finish is done. This is you're actually working with the real colors. Okay, so we're almost there. We're looking good down here. Again, I missed that spot with a bit of the red. So we'll ja just dab it in a bit more. Get a little bit of that mahogany color out. When working on a larger area like this where I've got multiple color tones in the wood, it takes a little bit of time. So this has taken me six or seven minutes to get through this. On a smaller piece where you've got one tone you're looking at and blending colors to match that, it can happen much faster. Here you see there's a tiny gap. And what I'll do is show you the process up close. So here, melting the wax into the slot. And then take the darker wax also melt it, put it into the slot, let that harden for a second, and then come back and pull back on this. So there's the fill and then take the microfiber cloth, buff it up, and you're good to go. From a broken rocking chair to one that the customer is really going to be happy with, burn and sticks are part of the solution. All the examples you've seen so far are Mohawk's quick fill burn and sticks. These are products that I use regularly on furniture repairs and on new projects if I need it. The next product I have to show you is Mohawk's hard fill. These are designed for surfaces such as floors and tabletops. So I'm going to start by going into the kitchen where I caused some damage on my hardwood floor and we'll see how we can fix it. Be sure to go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter for links to new videos, workshop tips and more. Now back to fixing furniture. When I renovated my kitchen about eight years ago, I installed this hickory hardwood flooring. I'm really happy with it and I like the richness and color that it adds to the room. If you're installing hardwood flooring in your home, hang on to some extra pieces. That way, if you end up with a spot that's really severely damaged, you can cut it out and replace it with something that matches. I'm gonna get it set up here and we'll try out the hard fill. Here's the spot here, and I'll show you how this happened. The largest stainless steel bowl I have, I was actually drying dishes, and it came down from waist height and landed right here into that groove. And then miraculously, it bounced up, flipped over, and then on the exact opposite end of the rim, it hit here. So I've got these two scars here that I need to fill in. I'll start by laying down a moving blanket, and then I'll protect the floor from my belt and the rivets on my jeans. I'll pull out the supplies here. So we've got the hard fill, and we've got some of the same supplies we're going to use with the quick fill. So a microfiber cloth for buffing it at the end and the soldering iron but there's a new tool that we need here and this is called a hard fill leveling tool so i'll show you what this is all about in a minute i'll just take it out of the package and set it here i'm going to put some masking tape here and you can keep me honest 
what I'm going to do is just mark these so you can see where the repair is. I'll open this up and find a color that's going to match. Now, you can see there's quite a variety of color across the wood here. So what I need to do is find one that's about the color of the background in the area I'm working in. So these three are probably the closest. So if I hold these perpendicular to the camera, let me show you the back. See, that one's looking a little bit light for this particular area that I'm needing to fill. It might be more appropriate for that um, lighter color here. This one, this one's looking pretty close. Now to prep the space, what you need to do is just make sure there are no burrs. These are just straight on dents, so I don't have anything sticking up here. So I'm good to go. We'll heat up this soldering iron and get to filling. Now it's time to use the leveling tool and you can see up close there's a bunch of grooves in that and on this side they're on an angle and there's some on either end here as well. So I'm just going to take out this clean out tool, get it out of the way and then start to take it down. There you can see it's all inside and this clean out tool has little grooves in it so you can take out that wax. So I'll leave that in for now and see what this looks like. Oh, not too bad. Here you can see this fill and this fill here. They're sitting up just slightly high right now and you can see there's a bit of texture so I can take it down a little further but you can tell here this is just one blotch of color and there's so much grain variety in here. What I'm gonna do is work in a little bit of the dark in this area, just to break that up a little bit, and then I'll fully level it out. Wow, that's looking much better now. So just blending in some of that color has really made a difference. I'm gonna do a little bit more on this line here, on that dark part. And down here, I'm going to do a little bit here and just a little bit there and see if I can make that disappear a little bit more. It's getting harder to see. So the lines over here and over here. Add a little bit to this end here, maybe just a dab across here. Let's see how that works. Now, this is getting hard to film here because it's so close, but right here is the fill mark, and right here is the fill mark. You can see how the darker blend has gone in there. Now, what I've got in my hand here is a brush tip marker from Mohawk. And I've got a video that shows how to use touch-up markers. And I'll show you how this is gonna help disguise it. What I'm gonna do is follow the grain pattern in the fill. So just a light touch here. And what I'm doing is filling in the grain because the human eye will get distracted by these grain marks and won't pick up on the fact that there's a fill in here. Now what I find funny is I didn't notice these little tiny scratches earlier. So I'm gonna to touch those up with a touch-up marker. Then we'll take one final look. So there you go. This one up here is more difficult to see. This one you can see a little bit. Now we're six inches away. This is what it looks like one foot away. Can you tell where they are? Let me point them out. It's a good thing I put these marks here. It's there and there. So you can see them if you know what you're looking for. 
From five feet away, it's impossible to tell there was ever a repair done on the floor. The hard fill stick is meant for places that take a lot of wear. So on floors or tabletops, it's really hard enough that it doesn't need a top coat. So I'm going to leave this as is because the sheen is perfect for this floor. If you're using hard fill in an area that has a higher level of sheen, what you can do is add lacquer on top and choose a gloss level that matches your project. These products also take a shellac or a wax as a top coat, so you can choose the right finish that's going to work for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and you've learned a few things. My purpose is to build a supportive community around furniture repairs and help you be successful in your projects. If you'd like to join us, you can subscribe by clicking over here. And if you click on that bell icon and click all, you'll get notified every time we publish a video. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture. <laughs>